The entrance of thy word, it giveth light and it giveth understanding unto the simple. And I welcome you to a favorite program in His presence. A program that talks about the word of God and how we can apply the word of God into our lives so we can be a transformed, changed person from the old ways of life into the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of stature of fullness of Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And it's of the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has kept you and myself to witness another brand new day we need to give all the praises all the honor all the adoration back unto him because it deserves our praise the bible in psalm 16 verse 11 says thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy and as is right now in the pleasures forevermore i'm your host for today i'm Aki Kunle Akuna. and the topic i have before you on this glorious day is covenant partners and we are joined by pastor mrs for like a as the wife to the senior pastor of of scripture life christian center in lake in nigeria she's there to discuss with us on this day ma another great privilege again for us to have you to come and discuss with us nice on this to be day here again. good morning yes ma'am thank you so much man the last time we had you in the studio it was a wonderful time in god's presence yes, and we know of the truth god will also speak through you to his Amen. people our topic today is covenant partners but before mm. we actually start let's start with covenant what is a covenant mm. when we talk about covenant we're talking about agreement mm. covenant is an agreement between two or more people and um you know a god is a faithful god and I believe God that as we proceed in this morning open heaven, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Mm, amen. In as much as we've laid a, a foundation that covenant talks about an, an agreement. agreement. Now let's look at the other aspect of partner. If we say somebody is a partner, what does when it mean? talk about somebody is a partner, that means the person is a part of a thing. A, a partner is someone that is a part of, uh, of, of a thing, a part of an agreement or whatever. A part of a thing. The person is not just an outsider is he or she is part of that thing so we can say that a partner is somebody that is a part of the thing mm. Mm. all right man thank you so much my dad so powerful and so profound and so our viewers are let's go on to our first music video we'll be right back please stay with us in your presence that's where i belong in your prayer. God is a promise keeper. He's a covenant keeper. He never breaks any, any covenant that he has made. Welcome back from that false music video. And if you're just joining us, you're tuned into this presence on our topic today, Covenant Partners. And we're joined by Pastor Mrs. For Like It or Ladeko. Now, before we went to the previous break, the foundation is a covenant talks about an agreement. Mm. A partner talks about someone that is part, is part of something. Now, let's look at the word now. If we say Covenant Partners. Covenant Partner. When we talk about a, co a Covenant Partner, that means we're talking about two or more people that is part of an agreement. Two or more people that is part of an agreement. And in this morning, uh, Open Heaven, we want to look at how it is applicable to us, the agreement between us and God. Our God is part of, our, of, of the covenant. We, as his children, we are also part of the agreement. Mm. In as much as we've laid a foundation as to covenant is an agreement, Ma, let us look at because if we bring it into the contemporary world in mm. which we live in, when we say there's a covenant or there's an agreement, mm. there are obligations and there are performances That's that need to be met. So if we're looking at it from the scripture that, okay, we are now partner with God, what is our obligation and mm. performance so that whatever God has actually said, because if we bring it back to terms, mm. we go back to the promises of mm. God. And for us to be beneficiaries of the promises of God, hence, there are some there certain are some things, things that need to that be in place. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One thing I like God for is that he's a covenant keeper. And uh, I do say it times with that number, that for every of the promises of God in the scripture, there is always a path that we must play. A God is a God that says a thing. Oh. He's part of the covenant. He says a thing. He is to say a thing. He asks is to fulfill 
to do what he wants us to do. Many of us as believers today, we make a promise to God, we don't fulfill them. That means we have breached the covenant. Mm. God gives us a promise that is always a, a condition for us to fulfill before the promise can come to pass in our life. And God is a God that keeps covenant. Mm. When he says anything, he ensures he brings it to pass. Mm. But the question is, we as God's children, are we fulfilling our own part of the obligation? Mm. Because our case study today is about the life of Anna. Anna was a woman that had been belittled just because she was barren. She was a woman in the scripture that really that was really trusting the Lord for children. And a mate, Penina, has said a lot, you know, molesting her. But it got to a time in her life that she really needed to talk to God. She went to Shiloh that year. She's been going to Shiloh a lot of times. And she told God, God, give me a son and I will give the son back to you. That was an agreement between her and God. And I thank God for Mama Hannah. She made a covenant with God. You know, it was a vow. And she fulfilled it. But what is happening in, the, in, in Christianity of today? A lot of us, when we're asking the Lord for something, what do we do? We tell God, God, do this for me. If you do this for me, I will do that for you. But a lot of times, God will fulfill his own part of the obligation. We'll, many times, we fail to do what we promised God. And that's why some people, when they're trusting the Lord for healing, they will say, God, if you heal me, if you give me the job, I will sow this seed, I will serve you all the days of my life. They make a covenant with God. By the time they receive the healing, serve God, they will not serve. What they said they want to do for God, they won't do it. And that's why you see sometimes it seems as if some people receive healing, they lost the healing. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Still in the light of what you actually said, you said something that is very profound as mm. to our God is a covenant keeping Keeper, God. Yeah. If he says he will, mm. he will definitely do, and, will and, do and it. And that now brings us to the immutability of the counsel mm. of God over our life. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 6, mm. and I want to take it from verse 13 to verse 18 because so many at times like what you said mm. we don't look at ourselves mm. and at times we've promised god one two three four five mm. we didn't fulfill mm. now we're trying to strike the seventh day mm. with god and god is just looking at us mm. like this and we're like ah god but you said you're a covenant keeping mm. god this now you're not answering my prayers and all those things we look at when god has spoken it stands sure. Mm. If God has promised, it will fulfill. Mm. The Bible says from verse 13, Hebrews chapter 6, from verse 13 says, For when God made promise to mm. Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, mm. he swear by himself. That is, he looked to the heavens and to the earth. There's mm. nothing greater than him. Hence, Amen. the only thing he could swear by is mm. with himself. Saying, surely, mm. blessings I will bless and thee, will bless and multiplying I will multiply thee. Mm. And so, after he had patiently endured, mm. he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by greater, mm. and an oath for confirmation is to them an hand of all strife, mm. wherein God, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of mm. his counsel, confirmed by an oath, mm. that by two Im immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, mm. we might have a strong consolation, who are fled for refuge to lay hold upon his hope set before us. Let's look at the immutability of God's counsel, mm. because if God has spoken, surely it will come to that pass. That is it. Mm. Now, our God is a faithful God. Like I said earlier on, there is nothing God says that he will not perform. Anything he says, he will do. Now, I'd like to read from the New Living Translation, where we have just read from that verse 13, New Living Translation of the Scripture. For example, there was, there was God's promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater to swear by. God took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you richly. And I will multiply your descendants into countless millions. Then Abraham waited patiently. You know, God made a promise. It took years. It was not immediately that God made a promise. But what did he do? He waited patiently. And that is the problem with many of us believers today. Immediately, God gave us a promise. We want it to become immediately. The Bible says, Abraham waited patiently. And he received what God had promised. Verse number 16. When people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold, to hold them to it. Mm. And without any question, that oath is binding. You see, mm. they bring Somebody. someone that is greater. And with what is, whatever, they are, the, the, whatever has been the agreement, it is binding on them. You know, that's why some people, when they want to marry, they will say, okay, we are going to take an oath. 
if you if you if you are the one that defaults, this is what we happen. We see it happening in you know in the uh, back here in Nigeria. We see it happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at uh, that verse number seventeen. God also bound Himself with an oath, mm -hmm. so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that He would mm -hmm. never change His mind. Now, verse number eighteen. So God has given us both His promise and His oath. Can you see? He gave us the promise and he put an oath there. Because I'm God, I swear by myself, knowing fully well that nothing, no one is greater than God. He said, he swore by his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Our God is a promise keeper. He will not lie. Therefore, we who have, we who have fled to him for refuge can take new courage. We can hold on to his promise with confidence. Great that confidence. is everything mm. he has said he will do, he will do it. No matter the circumstances, even if he seems it's going to come to pass, the Bible says Abraham waited patiently for it. Hmm. You know, along the line, his faith shook. To me, I believe that uh, if his faith did not shake, when Mama Sarah told, uh, told him that, take my slave and sleep with her, mm. whatever child come that comes from her is mine. He, would, he wouldn't do that. But at the end of the day, he came back to himself. God had promised me his son. And the son is going to come to pass. And the promise came to pass. So God is telling us that no matter what it is, our God is a promise keeper. He cannot make a promise and he will not fulfill it. Us is just to key into that promise, knowing fully well that God never disappoints. Let us key into it. Let us see that if God can swear by his name and no one is greater than him, no name is greater than him, there is no how he's going to bring it to pass. And definitely it will come to pass in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Mm, amen, amen, mm. in Jesus' mighty name. That's so powerful and so profound. Thank you so much, man. I want to go into the hoping events of today. Mm. Our father in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adebo, wrote, mm. for you to fully enjoy the benefits mm. of your walk with God, mm. you need to understand his, his character. character. Yeah. Can we just look at the character of God? <laughs> mm. Now, one of, the, one of the greatest character of God is our God is a promise keeper. If you don't have an understanding of a thing, abuse is inevitable. That's right. When you don't understand the character of God, you might not enjoy your walking with him. You will just think that maybe we are just serving him for nothing. Our God is awesome. Our God is, is, no, is so marvelous. For my years of walking with him, I have seen him as a promise keeper. There is nothing that he says he will do that he will not do. You know, there are some songs we sing, a lot of times we don't really look into the lyrics of those words of the song we just think they are just song and the songwriter says he has never failed he will never fail he will do what he says he will do so for every one of us as children of god to really on this to really benefit walking with god to how to have the benefit we must understand this our god one of his greatest character is that whatever he says he will do he will do it he will never fail us even no matter let the devil raise his head. Let the enemy around. Let them do everything they think they can do. God will see fulfill what he says he will do. Let's look at the life of Joseph. God showed Joseph that this is what I'm going to do with your life. He told his siblings, he told everybody, the enemy tried to avert God's promises. But at the end of the day, they never knew that everything they were doing was just to bring Joseph to the promise, to, 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 to the fulfillment of God's promise for his life. And that is how it's going to be for every one of us in Jesus' name. Mm, amen. So understanding the character of God mm. is what actually gives us hope that comes yes, with great it confidence. Gives us hope. Yeah, it gives us confidence that this our God is a promise keeper. No matter what I'm passing through, no matter how the road looks so rough, mm -hmm. I am I'm sure I have an assurance that my hand is going to be that thing that God has said concerning my life. Hallelujah. Amen. So continue the hope in heaven. So our Father in the Lord for the roads, mm. one character trait mm. of God that is that it keeps his end, end of, of every covenant yeah, he enters, enters into. into. Yeah, it will not fail. It is not left for every one of us as believers to, you know, to keep our own end of the covenant. When God says it, this is what I'm going to do for you, it will, it will stand by it. But it's not left for you and I, for every one of us that are believers to stand by our own part. Don't just say it, oh God, I will do this if you do this. Don't just say it with mouth. 
God will definitely do in his own part. You know, I told us the earlier on, I said, covenant is an agreement between two or more people. But in this case, now it's between us and God. Two of us are involved. I was in a program sometimes last week, and the man of God that was ministering said, that his ministry, he said, there is always uh, an upline blessing mm. and a downline responsibility. Mm. The upline blessing is everything God said he is going to do mm. is there. Mm. But for us as a downline, God is the upline. There is a blessing there. We as a downline, we must fulfill our own part of the obligation. Mm. We should not just think, uh, let me just say it by mouth, God will just say, no. Mm. We must keep our own part of the promise of the agreement. Mm. Amen, Hallelujah. amen, in Jesus' mighty name. So, continuing the hope and as I found in the Lord Roots, based on my experience, I can boldly say that mm. entering into a covenant mm. partnership with God is a white thing to do. A white Times thing to do. without mm. number, mm. God has proved it to me yes, that no says. one can beat him in adherence Nobody. to the terms of the of a covenant relationship. Mm. In today's Bible reading, we see a situation where God's need intersected with the need of man, man to, to produce, produce a covenant, covenant partnership. partnership. Mm. God urgently needed a it's faithful priest, priest to replace Eli and his notorious children, mm. while Anna needed a son to silence her adversary, mm. Penina, who continually mocked her on the account of her barrenness. Mm. To get her heart desires, mm. Anna and entered I into a covenant, covenant partnership, partnership with, with God. God. Mm. She promised that if God would give, give her a miracle, a Mm. child she would, she would give, give him, him back, back to god. god the deal was struck mm. and i got a son and, and god, god got a priest. priest can you see that mm. you know it got to a, it, it got to a time i'm sure god was fed up with the type of lifestyle that the children of eli was living were living they were supposed to be they were supposed to be levites themselves because they are the offspring of a levite of a priest and you know they were just doing a lot of atrocities god needed a priest Anna needed a child. Mm. And when Anna went to Shiloh, Anna told God, God, give me a child. If you give me this child, I'm going to release the child back to you. And God looked at it as, ah, this is a very good option. Oh. I need somebody that will replace Eli and his children. I got to give this woman a child. I'm sure God has seen the heart with which Anna was making the promise. And she did not default. Mm. She didn't default. She gave, as soon as she win the child, she took the child back to God. She took somewhere back to God. God, I made this promise that if you give me this child, I'm giving him back to you. This is the child you have given unto me. And I'm sure God was so happy. At least now, I have a priest. God is a covenant keeper. I pray the Lord will give us the grace for us to keep our own part of the promise of the agreement in Jesus' name. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, man. So have yours out there. Let's continue to our Bible reading. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. In your prayer. Where I belong in your prayer. God is a promise keeper, He's a covenant keeper, He never breaks any, any covenant that He has made. Welcome back from the Bible reading. One and if you just joining us, you tune into this presence on our topic today, covenant partners. To so continue partners. into the hope and heavens, our Father in the Lord for the root. Testimonies abound of covenant partnership mm. in our ministry. Testimonies of how God has been, been keeping, keeping his own side of the, the bargain with those who have chosen to mm. partner with him in the advancement of his kingdom. Mm. There is one covenant partner in our ministry who rose from being an employee to so becoming a member of exactly. the company's board of directors. This exemplifies what those who partners with God stand to gain, provided they keep mm. to their agreement with God. with God. There's also a story mm. of someone who chose to partner with God but decided to breach the mm. covenant even before the first miracle matured. matured. A young man came to us and shared his desire to become a covenant partner with God. Mm. We prayed and received his first breakthrough when someone hired him to put his estate up mm. for sale. When we advised him to give God a tithe out of his profits from the deal, Mm. He fled up and said, not until another one comes. Mm. He left in anger. Before long, the fellow who wanted to he sell his estate, estate changed, his, changed mind. his mind at the point, point of, of payment, payment to the extent that he literally chased his, 
this covenant breaker away mm. this was how the young man lost a huge business deal mm. beloved god is a very faithful business partner to have if you decide to mm. enter into a covenant relationship mm. with him even though he is the senior partner in our relationship mm. he chose to make, to us, make us comfortable, comfortable. by asking for only mm. a tenth of, of the, the blessing he gives us to receive more blessings the wise will want to increase god's portion of, of this sharing, sharing formula, formula yeah. like some of us have done choose to partner with god today and, and you will see how pleasant he is to, to do business, business with, with. Mm. Mm. our god is awesome many of us as believers today we we look at it and say oh this money i've made it by my power why will i give god one tenth of the of, of whatever i have we can see what the, that in the Lord put here. He, he, what, the, 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 the man in question here, I'm sure, he was the one that told God, I want to be a covenant partner. I will do this, I will do that. By the time he saw money. You know, the truth is that when we are not faithful in little, mm. we cannot be faithful when we have much. Many people today, they find it so difficult to pay tight of little money. I remember an experience. I had some money came into my hand. Just... Just some few, very small amount of money. And um, one of my son in the law saw the money when I was putting package in my tight. And he said, Mommy, this money is too small. You paid tight of this type of money. I said, Yeah, if I bought a, a vehicle, if I'm not driving or I'm not going out to personal car, somebody pays for me, I remove my tight and pay. Because it's an income. If I'm supposed to pay like, let's say, 200 naira in Nigeria money, and somebody pays, I pay 20 naira. A lot of people will say 20 naira, that was just a gift. There is nothing that is small. We must ensure that we do our own part. There are a lot of promises that we, even though we are believers, we are missing because we are covenant breakers. When we grow to the level that we, 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 we fulfill a part of every promise, because I said earlier and I said to every of God's promises in the scripture, there is always the condition. Mm -hmm. And until we are able to fulfill the condition, we might not be able to receive the promise because we are not fulfilling a part of the condition. A covenant is an agreement between two people or more people. So God is our number one covenant partner. We must do our part. I'm sure by the time this person, this brother in question lost this deal, he will come to his senses. We should not be like this brother in question. We should not wait until when we miss opportunities. We should not wait until when we miss a lot of things before we come to our senses. We have the opportunity today. Go out there. I don't know whether you are there, you are finding it difficult to pay your tithe. And you believe that you have a lot of responsibilities. You have a lot of things to do with money. God is the one that has given you the path to make the money. Don't hold it to your soul. See it to it that when you give your tithe, when you give to God what he has given to you, he is coming back to bless you more and more and more. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. God will stand by his word to fulfill it. He's a covenant keeper. We must partner with him for us to see the, the, the promises that he has made in the scripture come to pass in our life. There are some that he has told us expressly. Maybe you had it verbally. Maybe the Holy Spirit drawed it in your mind. But most times we have God's promises in the scripture. And if you want to enjoy your walking with God, you must fulfill your own part of the promise. You must fulfill your own part of the covenant. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, man. We celebrate God in your life. And to have you all let's continue on to this short break, which will be useful at home. We'll be right back with the memory verse. We're still on our topic today. Covenant partners, please yeah. stay with us. We'll be right back. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your presence, God is a promise keeper. Is a covenant keeper. He never breaks any any covenant that he has made. Welcome back from that human. If you're just joining us, you're tuning into his presence on our topic today, Covenant Partners. And this is the time of the program where we discuss our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from Hebrews chapter 8, verse 9. The Bible says, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, mm. and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. For a better understanding, I would like us to take the 
read the preceding verse to this memory verse, and I would like to write, read it the New Living Translation for a better understanding. The scripture says here in verse 8, it says, Hebrews chapter number 8, verse number 8, but God himself finds fault with the old one when he said, the day will come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. Verse number 9 is a memory verse for today. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. They did not remain faithful to my covenant. So I turned my back on them, says the name of the, says the Lord. God is saying here, he said, he's making a new covenant. But the covenant will not be like the one he made with their fathers. He said, because the one he made with them, they did not fulfill their own part of the condition. They, they turned their back. Mm. Can you imagine when they were at the Red Sea, a lot of things happened. They were like telling Moses, ah, I'm sure if it's you know, like today, they say, Pastor Moses, why did you bring us here? You want us to live and die here? God made a covenant with them. He had promised them the promised land. But what happened? By the time they crossed the Red Sea, they turned their back at God. And God is saying that this new covenant is not going to be like the former one. That means we do, even after you have received what the Lord has promised you, we as children of God, we must not turn our back. He says, and I regarded them not, says the Lord. I regarded them not. Why did God not regard them? Because they turned their back at God. Look at what, what uh, Anna did in her case study, uh, the scripture where we read. She made a promise with God. She made, she, she made a covenant with God and she fulfilled her promise. She fulfilled the vow. God give me a son, I will give him back to you. The scripture told us that after God gave uh, Anna Samuel, God gave him five more children. You know, probably she would have just had the boy, I would not have another one if she had not fulfilled her own part of the obligation. Probably she would have even had Samuel, and Samuel would die. But she did what she ought to do. She kept her own part of the agreement, and God gave her more. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, man. The action point for today says, key into the power of the covenant partnership today to receive the answer to a long-awaited request from God. That's so powerful and so profound. Let's continue on to our prophecy declaration with our Father in the Lord. In the name that's above every other name, that wonderful name of Jesus, your season of rejoicing will begin. No matter how long your night had been, your night went to night. Your end will be far more glorious than your beginning. Every siege against you against your body, against your finances, against your family, against your business, against your church, against your nation, shall be lifted tonight. In the name of the almighty God, you will laugh last. By the time the sun is rising physically tomorrow, your own sun will be risen also. And you will never forget tonight. It will be the beginning of your joy. The beginning of your success. The beginning of your progress. You will laugh last. And for the rest of your life, you will serve God with gladness. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Let someone shout hallelujah. Welcome back from that prophecy declaration. I believe you've claimed every prophecy that has mm. come forth unto you. Now, before we let you go, we your final thoughts to our viewers on Covenant Partners. Mm. Viewers out there, I'd like to encourage every one of us this morning, knowing fully well that a God is a promise keeper, is a covenant keeper. He never breaks any, any covenant that he has made. It is now left for you and I, it's life for every one of us that are called by the name of the Lord to ensure that we fulfill our own part of the covenant. Never you be a covenant breaker. In the, in the quest of asking God for something, anything you've told God that you will do, ensure you do it. Or maybe you are, you are hearing, you are, you are the sound of my voice this morning, there's something you've told God you will do, God has done his own part of the deal, you've not done yours. Don't feel guilty, just go back to God and tell him you are sorry. And if it's within your disposal, that thing you have promised God, do it. The issue is when you, are, when you are a covenant keeper, God will do more for you. God made us understand in the scripture that uh, Anna promised God that he gives her a son, she's going to give the son back to God. Yes, God gave her a son. And not only one son, God gave her additional five children. So let us look at it that God is always there, is always ready to fulfill his own part of the covenant. Let us as his children to fulfill our own part of the covenant. And when we do this, we will never regret. It will make our relationship with God enjoyable. It will make our work with the Lord enjoyable. We we'll begin to see God in different dimensions because God knows that if I give this to this, if I give this to this, my son or my daughter, he will he won't fail me. She won't fail me. God will always be glad to do more. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, man. We celebrate God in your life. And we're so confident that God will continue to increase you from one level of glory to another in Jesus' name. Amen. Above all, thank you for making time to be with us on You're this welcome. video. It's a privilege being here this morning. Amen. Amen. And so, have you also I believe you've learned so many things on our topic today? Covenant partners, we need to understand that once we enter into covenant, we need to keep to the mm. end yes. of the deal. Because yes. our God is a God that keeps to the mm. end of the deal. And uh, Pastor Mrs. actually mentioned something that there is an upline blessing mm. however there is a downline mm. responsibility, responsibility which we all need mm. to keep really want to appreciate you for the time you spent to watch this program and i believe you'll be mm. blessed in a mighty way perhaps you have any comments you want to leave us you can get to share with us on facebook and i want to say keep watching our time god bless you